Wake Forest Demon Deacons, seven and six last year, three and five in conference. Returning starters, they got five on offense, four on defense. As far as experience goes, number two in the conference, yeah. number thirty-three in the country. That's pretty good. Uh, over unders five and a half. The schedule is a big part of that. Uh, to go over that, for them to hit six wins or more, juice is minus one fifty. To go under, plus one thirty. So obviously they expect them to go over. Uh, look, I, or sorry, sorry, sorry. I was looking at the wrong one. It's minus one thirty-five to go over, plus one fifteen to go under. So they still expect them to go over, just maybe not as much. Yeah. Head coach Dave Clawson, twenty-eight and thirty-five in five years, um, continues to prove he is a program rebuilder. Right, he started a true freshman quarterback, and he fired his defensive coordinator after four games last year. They still went to and won a bowl game. They have won three straight bowl games. Like that's, or they've been to three straight bowl games. I'd say I don't think uh, they've won all of them. Quarterbacks, think... sophomore Sam Hartman, he broke his leg in the ninth game last year, and then junior Jamie Newman. Uh, Newman came in and won three out of four in relief. They're both back. They lose three out of five offensive linemen, uh, basically the whole left side of the line and the center. Uh, defense has struggled since Mike Elko left. I mean, they were number 116 in total defense. They lost their their core, both of their defensive tackles. Um, but defensive end, Carlos Basham Jr. can absolutely be a star. Uh, it's not an easy schedule. The young players have got to step up so that we can find out more about Clawson's uh, recruiting acumen, really. But I like Clawson. He always figures out a way to win. His guys are in the right position all the time. And... Maybe not so much on defense, but on offense, they find ways to put up points. And the fact that they got both of those quarterbacks back, I like that a lot. I think that they will be able to replace the guys on the offensive line. Um, I don't think they're going to be great by any stretch of the imagination, but I got them at 6-6 six and six and making another bowl game. Now, that's 2-6 and six in the conference. Uh, but I think they beat Utah State week one at home. I think they win at Rice. They lose to North Carolina, beat Elon, lose at Boston College, beat Louisville, lose to Florida State, beat NC State, then lose at Virginia Tech and at Clemson, beat Duke, and then lose at Syracuse to end the season. I got them 6-6 six and six as well. Um, I, I don't know, and I probably could look this up pretty easily. I don't think they get blown out in a lot of games. No. I no, think no, no, part no. of having no, a, they, a really well-coached team. They have. No, I mean, well, but, yeah, you're right. But and not I, that they never do. I would bet that they cover a lot of spreads, even when they don't win. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're they're a tough beat. They're they're kind of like that thorn in the side team in the conference, to where a lot of teams are favored in yeah. those games. But man, you don't you don't know the teams they're going to cover, and you don't always just can't just chalk up W's either. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're going to be a tough out. Uh, I got them six and six as well. I wanted to I wanted to have them at least seven and five again. Just and that just schedule to, makes it almost impossible. The back half of that schedule is loaded. Yeah, it really is. And then some of these teams you just don't well, even in the know what you're getting. I mean, you, like you're, I, you're playing Utah State week one. Like that's that's right. That's that's, that's pretty tough. difficult. So and, and I, once again, I, I, I said this earlier. Oh, the other part about this, to, don't know what to make of Florida State. The other part about this, by the way, Wake Forest and North Carolina, and people hadn't talked about this in a while, but that is a non-conference game. They they were rivals for a long time, and because of the way that the ACC schedule has set up now that they have 14 teams. North Carolina and Wake Forest, like, they were not going to play from, like, 2016 until 2022. So they just got a, a non-conference series between themselves. So, wait, so this won't count against so their conference record? Will not count against the conference record. How does that work? Yeah, because it's a non-conference game. Uh, I don't like that. Well, I mean, it's not any different than, like, the Pac-12 playing nine games, but it, it doesn't count against their conference record. But it should. Because they're in their conference. Yeah, but everybody else plays eight conference games. They didn't have to play this one if they didn't want to. I, I don't I don't think it's a bad idea. If you have a traditional rival, like say say that Alabama and Georgia wanted to play more often than once every six years. Like I, I don't see any problem with them scheduling like a home and home. Like that's that's exactly what these guys did. And it not counting against their conference record. Yeah. Even though they're in the same conference. Yeah. I mean, it's weird. It's definitely weird. But it's not any more weird than, like, Liberty and New Mexico State playing each other twice in the same season. That would just give teams, like, a reason to, to schedule against your harder opponents on the other side, non-conference games. That way you can still win your conference if you lose that game. Yes, but, look, both teams have to agree to it. 
North Carolina and Wake Forest were not going to compete for no. national titles. Or You're anything. right. So they're not worried about a college football playoff. But because that is a home state traditional rivalry, they wanted to keep that going. So in order to keep it going, where they would play more than once every six years. So they couldn't just say, hey, we're going to have Alabama, uh, Tennessee. It's just every year. Well, just, that every, one's already every year. But, but, but why, why not just say, make this our every year cross-conference cross, uh, rival? See, and we and play the, them every year. How is that hard? I mean, it's not complicated, man. Well, because they've already got some of those, I believe. But why? Like Wake Forest okay, is yeah. So uh, if is it's Duke. Virginia Tech or if it's Duke, then no. Like, we're going to do something else. Yeah, but it's it, it's up to the teams. I don't have a problem with this. The like, I don't, I don't the know why you're worried about I don't, this. I don't like it. I don't like that. <laughs> and it's not a knock on Wake Forest or North Carolina. Just some conference just commissioner weird. should just step in and say, no, you're going to play it. That's fine. But, like, what? do you have to play Virginia Tech? Like, do we got it? Like, we can figure this out. This is not hard. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I don't know. Either way. All right, that's going to wrap up the ACC Atlantic. Uh, go over to winningcureseverything.com. Go over to tunicatravel.com. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube if you're watching there. Hit it on Apple Podcast. Leave us a nice review. Leave some comments. Share the show out. We appreciate you guys. We will see you again next go round. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.